hi there. Boy, is it hot today. That sun is really bearing down. I feel like I have no energy left. Maybe I need to eat something. Hmm. No, that's not going to work. I'll have to get my energy a different way. Maybe eating at the table would be better. <laughs> you may be wondering why we even need to eat at all. Well, it's because we need energy like all living things. But just what is energy anyway? That's the real question, isn't it? Well, let's go get some real answers. Scientists think of energy not so much as a thing, but more like the ability to do something or make some kind of effort. When I was mowing the lawn, I used an energy stored in my body to help me push the mower. The lawnmower engine used the energy stored in gasoline to spin the blade that cut the grass. When those kinds of energy get used, they have to be replaced. I have to keep putting gasoline in the lawnmower for energy, and I have to keep putting food in myself for energy. Mm. So how did the energy get into the food we eat to begin with? Well, believe it or not, the energy stored in all this food actually came from a star in the sky. It's a star we like to call the sun. The sun is the closest star to our planet Earth and the source of energy for most living things on our planet. Energy from the sun travels through space in the form of light. When that light gets to the Earth's surface, plants are able to use the energy to make their own food and grow. That's why most plants don't need to eat like we do. We get the energy stored in plants like these fruits and vegetables when we eat them. And we also get nutrients and vitamins that are good for us. So eat lots of fruits and vegetables to keep your energy level up. It's star power. The same way that you need energy to survive, so do all the different living things in the world. Every living thing needs energy, but not all living things get their energy the same way or from the same place. Plants like these here get their energy from the sun. The reason that plants have leaves is so that they can gather up light energy. Plants use that energy to help make food right inside their leaves, so plants don't eat like we do. Some living things like animals do have to eat though. Animals have to find food on their own. Some animals work together to gather food. Animals have different ways to get the food they need for energy. Some hunt for their food. Some eat just what they can find. Some like pets have to be fed. But still, all living things, including animals, need energy. We're here at a farm where they know a lot about growing plants. You know, many plants start out as small seeds. And you might wonder, well, if seeds don't have any leaves yet, where do they get their food from? Well, seeds actually have their food stored up inside of them already. Most of what you see in a seed, like this lima bean here, is food for a very tiny plant called a seedling that's already beginning inside. If a seed is planted, watered, and taken care of the right way, a tiny plant will have enough energy to start growing. If the new plant that grows gets big enough and stays healthy, it will make more seeds that can also grow into new plants. The energy that plants store up is very important to us. Now, you can't just go eating any kind of plant. That could be really bad for you. But there are so many different kinds of plants out there to eat, though. I, I'm sure you can find something that you like. Uh, maybe you like sweet kinds of fruits, like apples or pears, or, ooh, strawberries and uh, bananas. Or maybe you like more sour kinds of fruits called citrus fruits, like oranges and grapefruits. Or how about vegetables like ooh, celery or 
lettuce or maybe even broccoli. Well, chances are there's some kind of plant out there that you really like to eat. And that's a good thing because plants are just full of energy. Eating the right kinds of plants gives you the energy that you need to live. And now it's time for Gunther and the crazy monkey. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's me, Gunther, and I'm here with the crazy monkey. Monkey is an animal, and that makes him a living thing. Because the monkey is a living thing, that means he needs energy. Right, monkey? Good monkey. Right now, monkey is very hungry. This morning, I ran out of bananas, and I tried to give monkey some healthy salad instead. Monkey got very angry with me and started throwing tomatoes everywhere. It was a very big mess to clean up and Monkey ate nothing. We're still out of bananas, but I think Monkey will like this nice, healthy, energetic broccoli. Here, Monkey, what do you think? No, Monkey! No, stop it! You're making another mess! Bad Monkey, ouch! Don't do that! Stop it, Monkey, stop! This has been Gunther and the crazy Monkey! Come back! What are you doing? Monkey, where are you going? Monkey, come back here! Monkey! Monkey, where are you? Monkey! Sometimes I like listening to music on my stereo system. A system is a bunch of stuff that works together, almost like as if they were one thing. Well, usually a system needs some kind of energy to keep it going, too. And this stereo system is made of a bunch of different parts all working together. This part is called the receiver. It's the part I use to figure out what I want to do with sounds that go into it. And then there are other parts like this CD and DVD player that send sounds over to the receiver. The receiver can make the sounds louder or softer, but not without these. These are called speakers. Speakers are what actually vibrate the air and make sound. And do you know what kind of energy it is that all the parts in this system use? It's electricity. You know, there are lots of different kinds of systems and some of them need more than just electricity to work. This is an aquarium with a bunch of little fish swimming all over. And believe it or not, it's also a system. This system doesn't just have parts that use electricity, though. It has living parts, too. There is some electricity being used to run the motor way back here that pumps the water and filters it in the aquarium. This helps keep the water healthy for the fish. But fish can't use electricity for their energy. They're living things. So you know what they need for energy? Food. Well, fish food. Here you go, guys. Time to eat. This living system needs electricity and food for energy to keep it going. But many systems of living things don't need any electricity at all. Those systems are called ecosystems. This is a living forest ecosystem. This kind of system is full of all kinds of different parts and living things. There are plants, animals, there's water, but there's no electricity. So where do you think this system gets its energy from for all these living things? To figure that out, you have to look up. It's the sun. Plants in this living forest ecosystem use the sun's energy to make their own food so they can grow. Animals eat the plants and get their energy that way, just like people do. So you see, there are lots of different kinds of systems, but they all need some kind of energy to work. So far, we've seen a stereo system, an aquarium, and a forest ecosystem. But do you know what those systems and just about any kind of system all have in common? Two things, matter and energy. Matter is just stuff. The parts of the stereo are stuff, the fish, the water, the trees and animals and even this stick. It's all matter. But none of that matter would do anything if it wasn't for energy. The electricity, the food, 
and the sunlight. Matter and energy work together in a system to make things happen. Living things need energy. All living things on our planet Earth need energy. Plants, animals, people, all kinds of living things. People get energy from the food they eat. Our bodies use the energy in food to help us move and grow. Some foods are healthier than others, so it's important to make good choices with the kinds of things we eat. The energy in much of the food we eat originally comes from the sun. The sun is a star that's closer to us than any other star in the universe. Plants use energy from the sun to make their own food so they can live and grow. People and animals get their energy from plants and other things they eat. The sun supplies energy for living things in special kinds of systems called ecosystems. There are lots of different kinds of ecosystems. There are forests, deserts, wetlands, jungles, all kinds of ecosystems all over the world. Ecosystems aren't the only kinds of systems. An aquarium is a kind of system that has living things in water. A terrarium is a kind of system that has living things on land. Not all systems have living parts. A sprinkler system has no living parts. But there's one thing that's true about all systems. They all have some kind of matter that makes up the system's parts. And they all have some kind of energy that makes them work. Energy is very important to us. We couldn't survive without it. Energy isn't always doing things. Well, sometimes it's just all stored up waiting to do something. After you digest food, some of the energy you get is used to help you to move around. But a lot is stored up inside your body. If it wasn't stored up, you'd probably have to keep eating and eating and never stop. Hmm, that doesn't sound too bad to me, but I'd have to buy a lot more food, that's for sure. Well, eventually you do use up all of your stored energy and have to replace it. Like, ah, with an apple. There are other things that store up energy too, like batteries. Electrical energy that's stored up inside of batteries can be used to make things work. Like this flashlight. But, just like you, the stored energy in the batteries will eventually get used up and need to be replaced. There. So, what could we do without energy? Well, nothing really. Living things couldn't grow and nothing would work. So, it's a good thing there's plenty of energy in the world for us to use. Maybe someday we can use our energy to unlock some of the amazing secrets of the universe. If we put our minds to it. You and me. Science and me.